I think that youth really did um, change. The historians um, like to talk about the creation of certain things that we take completely for granted. In the 19th century, people, historians have talked about the creation of motherhood as a separate kind of activity that could be um, taught, mothering classes, and uh, had to be learned and involved a certain, set, a certain set of skills. Other historians have talked about youth, that youth was something that people that was created at a particular historical time, and that time varies uh, according to historians, but there is a, a strong sense that it, it um, that youth became something very, that period of time, let's just say between 12 and 16, 17, uh, became a, a very a separate and identifiable period. Instead of being um, well, in agricultural societies, people would be working from a very early age, but they would really become full-time workers from the age of, let's say, 12 to 14. Sometime in there, they would take on a full load of, of work uh, in an agricultural um, setting. So what happened with urbanization and industrialization, one of the things that happened was uh, compulsory schooling. So compulsory schooling, which at first only went up to age 12, um, that meant that, so a, 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 different definitions of childhood were beginning to emerge at that time. The childhood was a time when you were protected, and that language was used, you were protected from being forced to work, um, and you were going to be nurtured like a, like a flower and, or some precious living being uh, to through that period uh, that, that extended much much longer than than um, had been common in in, uh, in certainly in agricultural societies and it was going to be a time of uh, of learning and of creativity so from the 19th century late 19th century these new ideas about um, about childhood about what was appropriate during childhood emerged there's a fantastic book written many many years ago now by I can't remember her first name, Zelitzer, called Pricing the Priceless Child. And she talks about that moment in, between about 1870 and 1890 where, ch where children changed, their meaning in society changed from being uh, sort of not worthless, but, but children who had to, um, their contribution was weighed by how much they could help the family survive. That was in the 1870s, still a predominant idea, until and then con contrasting that with the 1890s, when, uh, when for, the, for the first time, children, instead of being seen like as worth, uh, worthless, became priceless. And um, you weren't to, to look at them for their economic value. You weren't to look at them for what they could bring to the family. You were supposed to be nurturing them for the benefit of their own individual souls and selves. Uh, so, so those were, so at the same time that well, actually, not at the same time. So in the 1890 to sort of 1940 period, the idea of, of, of childhood up to, say, the age 12 or 13 uh, was one where you were supposed to be protected, you were supposed to be nurtured, you were supposed to be educated about the larger world and society in which you lived. At the same time, um, at the later period in, in people's lives between, say, let's just say 14 and, and 18, was seen originally in agricultural societies just as a time for, for uh, working, perhaps not as well, and in a, as a kind of, uh, in a training mode. But after the 1940s, um, after the 1940s, a, a whole bunch of changes happened that resulted in in the consolidation of, of a trend whereby uh, that later period of time was also seen as, as a time when people needed to be nurtured, they needed to be protected, and they needed to be controlled. With the growth of urbanization, there was a phenomenon and a fear of a phenomenon of kids not having enough, um, enough rules, enough constraints, because frankly, before large-scale urbanization, people, including teenagers, were really, really strictly under the eye of, of their parents, of their family, of their extended kin, and, if, and as well, 
of a, a small local community. So that was a lot of a lot of surveillance, a lot of oversight, a lot of um, discipline, in the sense of being reprimanded, but also being very constrained in what people could do. So with urbanization, with ongoing industrialization, but in the post World War II period, there was such a an increase in people's wealth in in Canada, which I think is really key to understanding why there was a all of a sudden burst onto the scene were, were teenagers, teenagers who had opinions, they had um, what they considered their own culture, a culture that involved things that, that adults found troubling. Uh, one of the kinds of, of things that were identified with, um, with teenagers were youth gangs. That had been a phenomenon that had begun in the early days of, of urbanization in Canada and in, in Great Britain and Europe. So that was a source of fear. Then there was a, a kind of a redoubling that we don't want our children to become juvenile delinquents. That was a, a really big concern. It was also a reality. I mean, that you know, then as now, young men are, are some of the most violent people in our society. And uh, but that became at that period in, in the, from the 1940s, it became. A phenomenon, a social, there was social commentary about it, there was also medical commentary, uh, the idea of, um, the idea of uh, psychological issues related to, to being a teenager became, you know, very, very important. Psychology itself uh, tied in with these changing ideas of childhood and development and growth to be a human being, those became very important as well.